hello family welcome back to another youtube video if it's your first time here welcome welcome my name is lucy brown i surely do hope that you enjoy this video and this content as well and if you do indeed please do make sure that you consider becoming part of this family by hitting the subscribe button down below also before we continue as per usual please do make sure that you like the video before um you continue to watch it remember liking the video just basically helps you to, to recommend this video to a larger audience if you would like to be notified whenever i upload fresh new crispy content you're more than welcome to smash the notification bell down below now that that's out of the way as you see from the title of the video today we are speaking about how to be radically honest with god and obviously because i'm speaking about being radically honest with god this is obviously going to involve prayer um but i do want to say that the type of prayer that i actually want to touch on is not the type of prayer that we do with our families um in the evenings or in the mornings where we gather hands and we pray together or the type of prayer that we do uh, at our local churches on sundays where we pray with people praying loud praying out scriptures or praying in a way that sounds powerful and sounds radical and all of that i'm not speaking about that type of prayer and the reason why i'm not speaking about that type of prayer because i feel that at times in corporate prayers or when we pray with other people i find that we can't express ourselves as much as we'd want to when we are alone or that um, we can't be radically honest with God about the stuff that we are feeling, the stuff that we are going through because we are with other people. And so I feel like when it comes to prayer, the type or the notion that we've been taught or the stuff that we've actually picked up on when it comes to prayer is that we just say things um, onto the Lord that's going to sound appeasing. Um, we say things or we use eloquent um, speech we use these big words and we try and sort of like soften God um, to get us or to get him rather to hear our prayers you kind of pick up that there's certain things that you say to God or certain things you're supposed to say to God and certain things that you are not supposed to say to God so we take that or we have taken that and we've carried that out into our one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord so the type of prayer where you're just gonna be like okay God thank you for this day thank you for the Food that you put on 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 my food the type of prayer where you just like i'm even afraid to kind of voice out um the things that really do not make me happy or kind of um sort of like address my feelings of how i'm feeling for instance when you're feeling like god i feel like you aren't coming through for me and i feel like i've been praying for this one thing you kind of are afraid to voice out those things because the sort of notion or what we were taught or what we've picked up from what um, we've seen when it comes to prayer is that any sort of complaining or any sort of addressing feelings that do not look like Christ like um, is kind of or, or seen or is, or is rather deemed as as sin right and I feel like to a certain extent that sort of notion or that sort of mindset does kind of hinder us from being radically honest with God. And this is not me saying that we should not have respect um, in our conversations with God and that we should not reverence him because at the end of the day, he is God. Definitely, we must respect God. We should respect God in our approach. Um, our approach needs to be respectful because at the end of the day, he is Lord. In this video, I really want to speak to the person who is kind of on that level where they like, I really, I hear people speak about having a personal um, relationship with God and having a personal relationship with Jesus, but I really don't feel like I have that. Or the type of person who's saying that I just feel like there's something lacking in my prayer life. Yes, I pray to God um, every night before I wake up. It's obviously as a routine. Um, but I want to speak to that person on how you can go about or the steps that you can kind of take, if you will, um, in order for you to get to a place where you're like, I have a healthy relationship with the Lord because I know how to be radically honest with the father well let's get right into the video point number one open dialogue open dialogue with god involves having candid um heartfelt 
honest, raw conversations with God. As it says in the book of James chapter 5 verse 16, that the heartfelt, persistent prayer of a righteous man availed much. And if you will, um, that was obviously speaking of Elijah, but it does speak to the fact that when he prayed out to God, that he prayed his heart out. And that's what brought about the result, if you will. Um, so this is to say that um, open dialogue with God when you are building or when you want to be radically honest with God, you've got to have that open dialogue with God, which allows you to express your innermost thoughts, your experiences and your emotions without any reservation. This form of communication is based on the understanding that God is an understanding God, that he is a loving God, that he is willing to listen to us and offer help and guidance when we need it. Cultivating an open dialogue with God also means that we have to be authentic, meaning that we have to be genuine and we have to be authentic in our conversations with God. And this is to say that at times, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that there's certain things or maybe at times when we have struggles, uh, struggling with emotions, struggling with sin, struggling with thoughts in our head. We are so afraid to address certain things with God because we just like, that just seems as if um, it's borderline disrespect. But here's the thing, before we even utter out a word to God, God knows us so well and he knows each and every thought before we even open our mouth. So there's no use trying to put up a facade or trying to uh, pretend with God, just to try and soften him, um, to say that, you know, God, you know that I love you. God, you know all of the, God knows our hearts. Um, and this is to say that because God knows us so well, he knows our thoughts, he knows our, um, he sees past uh, the words that we utter out to him. This should be an encouragement to us that because he knows us that well in and out, maybe it's just better off and that it is better off for us to just be open about the emotions and the experiences that are going on in our hearts at times. In a previous video that I actually made uh, a month back, if I'm not mistaken, I spoke about um, the things that I wish I knew before marriage. And one of the things that I mentioned um, of the things that I wish I knew before marriage is that when you get into marriage, um, prayer, the dynamics of prayer does not change. It does not automatically now become now just because I'm married, uh, I'm going to pray with my husband. We're going to be this uh, powerful prayer couple type of vibes. No. Um, and I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, there's just certain things that when you are praying in a group or with a group of people, you can't be radically honest with God about. So um, in us cultivating and trying to grow our relationships to a point where we can speak our hearts out um, to God, we need to make sure that we are creating ourselves an environment that's going to cultivate or an environment where we can um, voice out and be ourselves with God. So that is to say, find a peaceful and a private place that's going to help you and allow you to be honest with God, allow you to cry out in an ugly way or cry out in a way where someone's not going to be like, like what's going on with her or what's going on with him. Um, create and get yourself a place where you can um, have some intimate, some private time with the Lord where you're not going to be um, disturbed. Um, and that obviously allows you to speak your heart out loud or speak your heart out to God, cry in a manner that you want to cry or um, do whatever you want to do that's just going to allow you to fully express um, what you want to express to the Lord. Point number two, vulnerability. Vulnerability is about recognizing that God's love for you um, is unconditional and that you can actually approach him without approach him with your true self or with your whole self rather without feeling or without the fear of being judged instead of trying to hide your fears and your insecurities acknowledge them when you communicate with god this act of vulnerability creates a space for comfort and for healing. For instance, I'll make a plain example. Um, I remember actually when I was quite young, quite young, I think I was like maybe 11 years old, 10 years old, around there. But I, I had noticed, I think at that age, 
or well god has like been trying to call me to him at a very young age but at that age i just remember thinking to myself that i loved my mother so much in my heart and in my mind i loved my mother so much and i really felt like my whole world um revolved around her. and i felt like if anything had to happen to this woman like i'm like literally like there's no purpose for me in this world but i just remember and i was not born again at that time but i just remember thinking to myself that i knew that the bible obviously spoke about idolatry and that i was not to put anyone um on the level um or on the same level um as god but i knew in my heart that my mother in a sense was my god that um, I literally felt like she was the air that I breathed. She was like my everything. And I felt like if I lost her, like I'm doomed for life type of thing. But I just remember that I remember in my head and in my heart, I knew that. But when I prayed, I was so afraid to speak about it um, in prayer to God because I just felt like, yeah, I just felt like I was just not ready to dethrone her in a sense um, out of that position that originally and actually belonged to god and fast forward years later when i actually did receive salvation i eventually confronted or i spoke to god about it and i um realized that it was coming from a deep feeling of um feeling neglected and because i just felt that because she's my mother and um, then she will never neglect me type of thing and I just felt like everyone else because they don't have that bond because they didn't give birth to me will never ever have that type of feeling um, or commitment towards me in a sense but I realized that when I was actually open to God about like how I truly felt and why um, I truly felt that way about her that kind of opened up uh, an area and a space for me to find comfort and healing in God and once I was able to receive of that comfort and of that healing then I was able to look on to God as as my everything basically um, and that's just to say that I feel like at times um, when we speak about being vulnerable or when we speak about being radically honest with God um, normally we associate it with our needs right that I can ask God for a car I can ask God for a house I can ask God um, for healing and all of those things but at times there are stuff in our hearts that we truly know um, and we will not dare utter it out to someone else because we are afraid that it's going to come off as unbelief that you owe he of little faith type of thing so we will not utter it out to other people but, but deep down in our hearts there's something that's happening there's questions that we have um struggles that we are going through that we're just afraid to even utter out to god because we're afraid that it's just going to come off as um unbelief or come off in a manner that's just going to paint you in a bad light if i can say so but if you're going to get any sort of help um from the lord from the spirit regarding your fears and your insecurities you've just um, or you just need to be willing to be vulnerable with the Lord and open up um, and show up um, as your full self in order for you to be able to receive from him. Being vulnerable with God also speaks to us being open about our regrets and our mistakes. What I've actually realized is that the reason why some of us cannot um, forgive ourselves of our past mistakes or forgive ourselves of our past lives if i can put it in that way um is because we just decided to like bury it and or, or sweep it underneath the carpet we just decided to sweep it underneath the carpet and just keep it going and then when these things resurface again in terms of triggers in terms of memories or whichever way they choose to uh, resurface there we find ourselves in a position of condemning ourselves because of past decisions because of regrets and our past life you will never get rid of the guilt and the shame for as long as you are not willing to be open and vulnerable to god about your past mistakes about your regrets about your insecurities the act of vulnerability is a transformative uh, process that allows you to experience a profound sense of connection and love from God. So if you learn to get yourself to be vulnerable with God, you'd get to a place where you understand that God has forgiven me for my past mistakes, for my past 
um, regrets and that I don't have to keep hammering myself and beating up myself um, up for all of those things and therefore you can move on from that but if you're gonna forever be trying to bury your fears your insecurities your mistakes and all of those things you truly aren't going to grow and heal and get the comfort that you need um, in order for you to close um, those things off of your life Point number three, surrender. Surrendering to God involves releasing the need to have complete control over your life, but rather entrusting your desires, um, your dreams, um, your the stuff that worry you, entrusting all of those things onto God. It's recognizing that there's a greater plan and that there's a greater wisdom at play and allowing yourself to be guided and led by the spirit in order for all of those things or in order for God's plan upon your life to come to pass. It means losing your grip on trying to control every aspect of your life. And I know for some people, this is truly an area of struggle when it comes to being radically honest with God. And I think for me, it has always been an area of struggle and continues to be. I want to be in control of my life so much. And I think to a certain extent, it is pride because how are you like, there's so many things at play um in one person's life in order for things to come to pass and for you to say that i want to be in control of all of those things despite that there's a spiritual realm despite that you've got an enemy um is a bit prideful to think that you are all knowing to that point that you can plan so well to get yourself to where god needs you or god wants you to be and this is not me saying that planning um, is not important. It's beautiful to plan. It's important to plan. Um, but there's this verse that I love so much and it says that except um, the Lord, except the Lord builds, he that builds, builds in vain. And that's to say that a man can plan in as much as he wants to plan. If it's not the Lord who's bringing about those plans in your heart, then you are planning in vain. If it's not the Lord who's building the desires in your heart, then you are building in vain. Because we all know that the fact that we might have desires and plan, it does not necessarily mean that it's in alignment with God. And that's why it's so important to make sure that when we do have plans and desires and dreams, that we keep them in check. That when we pray, that we bring our desires and plans to the Lord. Um, and that what or how it basically works is that when you have a desire about something you pray about it and the more you pray about it the holy spirit or the lord or the father whichever one you prefer to use um will give you some sort of impressions in your heart that will kind of confirm in a sense of whether that desire whether that dream whether that plan is in alignment with god or not some people would say that you'd get a peace concerning a desire or concerning a plan or you'd feel that you're just not restless or sometimes you just find yourself in a place where you lose the desire for that particular thing altogether so it's important for us to get to a place where we're like god um, these are my desires, God. This is my this is my desire and this is my plan. But God, I'm surrendering all to you and surrendering all to you in a sense that I don't have full control. I'm not and I'm not going to try and have full control over my life. At the end of the day, you are God and you do have the final say. I acknowledge that I'm not able to foresee everything in the future and thus God, give me understanding or please grant me understanding that, that it does not mean that you are not for me and that you don't love me. Or when there is a delay concerning a, a prayer, that it does not necessarily mean a denial. That type of surrender is aligning your intentions with God's purpose. Surrendering also speaks to releasing our anxieties and our worries onto God. Some people would say leaving your problems, your anxieties and your worries at the feet of the Lord. And personally for me, I can tell when I have not left something at the feet of Jesus or I can tell when um, I have not addressed or I have not prayed about something. The level in which it worries me and my level of anxiety um, when I have not prayed about something is just, it's crazy. But what I've noticed is that when 
I've learned and when I come to God concerning my anxieties and regarding my worries, regarding my my troubles basically, when when I've prayed to God about them, there's this peace, especially if I pray if I've prayed long enough for it. And long enough I'm not saying um you know um that there's a time that there's a time frame um for how long you can bring these things in prayer if i can put it in that way but that's to say that um that if you are in prayer regarding something and there's no sort of peace or there's no sort of change in your spirit you haven't stayed long enough in god's presence um and that's to say soak yourself and immerse yourself in god's presence to a point where you are then finding peace within yourself and what that peace actually does for you is that it, it relieves the burden of constantly trying to figure things out or trying to figure everything out on your own and allows us to find comfort and guidance from the lord because he's all-knowing and because he genuinely has our best interests at the core of his heart. Point number four, questioning. I think I've said this before on this channel that having questions is not directly proportional to unbelief. The fact that you have questions about your faith, have questions about situations which you seek understanding of does not equate to unbelief. If anything, questioning is a natural process of spiritual growth. You can't say you're growing and yet you are not questioning certain things. Questioning to a certain extent can bring about a deeper meaning and a deeper understanding rather of the things that you are taught or of the things that you read in your Bible. As long as it's a sincere type of questioning which is leading you to learn and to grow. And that is all to say that you can't or you should not be having questions, for instance, concerning the Bible and yet looking for the answers uh, for those questions from everywhere else except the Bible. And I've cautioned about this um, towards people, for instance, who will be like, no, but Christianity doesn't make sense. And I'm like, but if you're going to say Christianity doesn't make sense and you've got questions concerning it, how are you going to answer those questions from sources outside of the Bible? And so I want us that in as much as it's beautiful and it's important for us that when we have questions, that we need to make sure that when we are trying to find out the answers to those questions, that we are not looking for answers to those questions outside of the source or outside of God himself or outside of the word of God, which is the Bible. So if you have burning questions regarding your life, regarding um, your spiritual life, regarding the Bible, regarding God, regarding situations, regarding why God allowed certain um, why God allowed certain situations, wrestle with those questions in the Lord. Wrestle, rather wrestle and suffer with whatever question that you have um, in the Lord. And I just want to say this again that at times. At times, guys, we might not get um, every answer to every question that we have. And I know it might sound a bit offish for some other people, but this is the honest truth. At times, you're not going to get the answer of why um, you go through certain things in life. For instance, in the book of Job, you see that God does not, if you read the book of Job really well, you'll see that God does not even tell Job um, of why um, he actually allowed Satan to tempt him. Job actually did not, God did not tell Job that information. Um, and we don't see God ever telling him. Um, so you need to be comfortable with the fact that yes, I have certain questions and certain questions, I want answers to them. But if God decides in his, um, in his awesomeness and because he's all knowing, if he decides that he's not going to answer you in this, in this age, um, you need to be comfortable with that in saying that God, you are all knowing. And if you feel, and if you deem, if you deem it appropriate for me to not to know or not to know the answer for this right now, then I'm fine with it, God. Maybe you might find out the answer, get the answer to certain things when Jesus comes back again. But that's all to say that when you have questions with the Lord, be radically honest with God concerning the questions that you have. Don't allow Satan to sway you away um, through questions that you have deep down inside that you're just afraid to address 
um, or voice out to God. Be, be honest with God concerning the questions that you have. Um, and that truly will help you to get to a better place or to a safe place where your questions um, that you have with you are not going to be the one that are going to draw you away um, from the Lord. Point number five, set time aside for silence. A healthy relationship is never one-sided. So when we want to, in as much as we want to speak about being radically honest um, with God about addressing um, the things that you have in your heart, being open with Him, open dialogue, and all these things that we just mentioned, um, a healthy conversation is a two-way type of conversation. So you need to create space um, or create an atmosphere where you can experience stillness and stillness in a sense that um, your heart can be receptive of what God wants to say to you or what the spirit wants to communicate to you. And this means being present in the moment. At times um, when we go into prayer for some people, and I know I've been there before, and I know you definitely have been there before, that when we are in prayer, we are just in a hurry and in a rush to get this over and done it because we've got so many things to do. You're thinking to yourself, ah, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. So I'm just going to tell God what is really on my heart. I'm going to thank him for the day and keep it going and I'm, I'm done basically. But being present in the moment makes a world of a difference. When you are present in the moment and especially when you are um, expectant of the Lord to speak to you, to say something or to give you impressions um, or holy impressions or peace in your heart, it, it does grow your awareness of God or your, or your awareness towards um, the feelings and the emotions of the Spirit. So by engaging in silent contemplation, we give ourselves the opportunity to, to basically listen, to listen to what God has to say, um, to reflect um, on whatever we are praying about, whatever we are reading, because you can also practice this while you are reading the word of God, where you are reading the word of God and you're reflecting it into your life. Um, so by engaging in silent contemplation, we give ourselves the opportunity to, to listen, um, to reflect, and to experience a deeper level of awareness. In the noise of everyday life, the noise of social media, the noise of um, what the world expects of us, um, the noise of our own thoughts and our own desires and our own dreams, right? It's very important to put ourselves um, in a place where we are able to be still and hear what God is saying concerning our lives, um, concerning a situation, or just allow God or allowing ourselves to really hear um, the heart of God concerning his church and just enjoy true and deep, genuine fellowship with the Lord. So guys, I'm going to end it off here. I hope these points that I just mentioned will really help you to cultivate or to get yourself to a place where you can be radically honest with God and grow your fellowship and your intimacy with the Lord. Again, if, if you have not liked this video, please do make sure that you like it. Give it a massive thumbs up. If you would like to leave a comment, you're more than welcome to do so. Leave an emoji, leave a heart. It's truly all up to you. Or even tell me what were your thoughts, what's your thoughts concerning um, this video and concerning the points that I just gave. If you have not done so by now, please do also make sure that you consider hitting the subscribe button if you do enjoy the content and if you did enjoy this video as well. Guys, thank you so much for your continuous love, for showing up. I truly do appreciate it. It does not go unnoticed. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one.